Uh, sounds like you might get your, uh, your your guy back in Jamar. What's that? What's that like knowing he could be available this week? Yeah, he's been working hard, resting, doing rehab. So hopefully we can uh, get him back to practice this week and get him feeling good. Now that there's oh, go ahead. now that there's a little bit of sample size without Jamar, have you kind of noticed how defenses have played you differently, or if they haven't played you differently in his absence? A little more man without him, uh, which is expected. What have the conversations been like between y'all as he's kind of been out in the preparation, as, even though he's not playing? Yeah, he's been in, in you know some of the meetings. He obviously has a lot of rehab to do, but uh, you know he's stayed engaged, been exactly the the kind of teammate you would expect. What, what do you make of that receiving room as a whole? It seems like there's a really good vibe in there. How long has that kind of been that case for you? How long have you seen that? It's been that way since I've been here. You know, they have got really good people in that room that work hard, matters to them. Uh, they're gonna, you know, maybe they don't do everything perfect every single time, but they're going to play really hard. They're going to block their asses off for the run game. Um, just matters a lot to them, and they're fun guys to be around. How often, and obviously Jamar's one of your good friends, how often have you talked to him about the injury or the fact that you knew he was kind of shut down for four weeks? Did you just talk about other stuff? Yeah, we didn't talk about the injury too much. You know, I asked him every now and then, but you know, I know as soon as he's he's ready to go, he'll be back ready to, ready to play and, and keep making plays. Is there anything that you learned about yourself as a quarterback while he was out? I mean, is there something that, that was revelatory at all? I mean, is there anything that was unexpected while he was away that you kind of picked up on? No, not particularly. Um, I am who I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> now that uh, other guys have uh, expanded roles as such a little bit and stepped up and made plays, did it kind of confirm, give you a confirmation of what you expected out of those guys? And now you know what you can expect when they're out there? Playing? Yeah, I knew. You know, a guy like Trent Irwin, I knew exactly what I was going to get when he gets on the field. You know, he, in practice, he does exactly what he's supposed to do, runs the route exactly the way you expect it. He's going to be right where he's supposed to be at the time he's supposed to be there. Um, and that's, that's what you need out of a guy like that. Uh, he's going to play hard, and he's going to uh, catch balls when his opportunity comes. How much will you monitor Jamar this week, asking how he's doing? All the <laughs> Is there... A is that something you do or, or, or have to do? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, we'll see how he's feeling. Uh, you know, we, we expect him to play. Um, you know, I know he ran yesterday and he, and he felt good, so we'll, we'll see how, he, how it goes the rest of the week. You play a team like the Titans, kind of similar to Atlanta in terms of like time of possession and what they want to do with Derrick Henry. Given how you guys seem as an offense to really play a lot better and get out with a win, and an extra emphasis this, this week getting out of the league. Yeah, whenever whenever you play a team like like this that, that likes to run the ball, you know your your possessions might be limited throughout the game. So you got to make the most out of them. Uh, and, and obviously jumping out to an early lead will um, put these guys in a position that maybe they're not used to or maybe they don't want to, to be. Um, so we, you know, that's our, our plan. But, you know, the game, the game goes as the game goes. And whatever's... The, the game requires is what we'll do. If we have to come back from, from a deficit, that's what we'll have to do. But uh, that's obviously not ideal. You've played a few uh, few games like this against those teams that can run the ball pretty effectively. I mean, how, did, how much does that change the game plan when you know there might be fewer possessions? It doesn't change the game plan. Uh, it just, you know, puts some more urgency in you. You know, you know you got to make the most out of every possession that you get. Last game you played against them in the playoffs. Uh, nine sacks, but you threw for way over 300 yards. I mean, you ever been in a game like that where, you know, you had that combination? It's kind of an odd, uh, odd combination to have that much success with that much pressure. Yeah, that's uh, you know sometimes games go that way. It's uh, you know they got a good front, so they're going to get pressure, but uh, it's going to be about how we handle it and get the ball quickly. You know, get our completions and, and move the ball up and down the field. What do you remember the most about? Tough physical game. You know they always they always bring the the physicality. So we got to match, if not exceed their their effort and their physicality, and that's that's how we're going to have to win the game. I think that game is one of the reasons that, that Kappa and Karras and Cordell even are here right now. What what kind of growth have you seen from that interior of the O line from week one till now, just as a unit? Yeah, I think those guys are are playing as good as anybody in the league right now. The, you know, as much as I, we just straight drop back, um, it's really been great to see the growth 
of of those guys up front and the communication and the camaraderie and chemistry. Uh, we got a, a great culture in that room, and they're, they they just keep getting better and better. I'm really excited about where they're at. With them setting the, with them setting the depth of the pocket and just keeping the pressure at bay, what what does that allow you to do more? But how does that help you? Yeah, it makes it makes it easier on me because I can step up into the pocket and and really you know drive throws where you know those guys are being really firm and and protecting great inside. And so I can set the pocket deep and step up and, and make make tight throws down the field with without anybody on my feet, and it really lets me step into that and drive it. Is it a trust level thing? Because I mean, the other day you were stepping up, moving all around, and, and seeing the field really well. Obviously, did, did you notice that that you were able to um, even when there was a breakdown, say for Cordell or whoever, you were able to, to hide that, mask that, and get the ball down the field? Yeah, that's you know when. When everyone is is working together as a unit, then there's always space for me to step up and try to make plays and escape the pocket if if it's not there. Um, and you know, like I said, those guys are not just even if they lose, they're still fighting and they're always there. They're never just you know they don't get beat at the line of scrimmage and then give up. If they get beat early, they're gonna fight back and you know get a piece of him. So then maybe I can step up and get out. How's that game? How have you improved? Against pressure, what have you done to to be better against pressure since that? Since that game? Uh, you know, I've just seen more football. I, you know, can get, get the protections directed a, you know, a little better than I could. Uh, just getting the ball out quickly. Another year in the offense, uh, understanding where the ball is supposed to go. Is that is that maybe the biggest thing is getting the ball out because you know where it, because you just had more reps and been through it more. Yeah, I mean, we we do a good job in against zone and man coverage of finding zones as, as receivers and understanding when the ball is going to be out. And so you got to credit those guys too. How good, how good have you guys become at making in-game adjustments and also week-to-week -week adjustments? Yeah, that's where our, our coaching staff kind of excels, is making those halftime adjustments, seeing what uh, defense is, is trying to do to us and, and making those adjustments to, to go attack, attack it. And you know, like I've said, the I couldn't ask for a better group of coaches that are um, one, able to do it, and two, uh, trust what I see as well to um, go out and make those adjustments on, on the fly. So, like, in the second half Sunday in Pittsburgh, what would you say, without giving away game plans and all that and the X's and O's, what would you say you felt most comfortable about the adjustments in the second half? Well, I just I was happy that, um, you know, I thought we were able to, to run the ball really well in the second half. Uh, you know, that was... A big point of emphasis going in. They're a really good front and a really good defense that's able to stop the run. And we made some great, you know, run game adjustments at halftime to kind of open those up, open up those holes for us. I believe five of your next seven opponents are ahead of you guys in the standings. Have been something that you guys have kind of talked about. And, and is that an important discussion as you come through the week? Uh, not too much. You know, we're gonna take it a week at a time. You know, we know we're capable of playing and beating anybody. So we just got to go out and execute the way we are. We are and, and, and have been. I think it's the first three games we faced the division champs from last year. I mean, how, how what is that, what is that like when you have those caliber opponents on the back half of the schedule? You've got ready for the playoffs. Playoffs, fo playoff football. All these games matter. They're they're going to matter in the standings down the road, and so we got to go out and, and play our best ball at, at the right time. This Titans defense giving up 18 and a half points a game. Sometimes the scheme makes the uh, the players better. Sometimes the players make the scheme better. Yeah. It, it, is Tennessee. Kind of, you know, they got a little bit of it all. Yeah, they're they're one of those teams that has has both. They have really smart players that have been in this scheme, in this, in this defense for a while, and they know how to how to play it and how to disguise it. And then they have really good players that can make plays on the ball and get pressure up front, and so they make it really hard on you. I asked Brian about this last week, and I know you've always been really confident in what T Higgins can do. But with the last games that he's had without Jamar Chase, kind of talking about how he's able to play as the number one wide receiver, from a quarterback's perspective, I asked Brian if there's is it a go ball type receiver like T, is he able to be a number one wide receiver in the NFL compared to the guys like Jamar, Cooper Cubs, that they move all around the field? Why is having a player like T and his skill set important? to have in your offense as a number one receiver? He's a really smart guy that not just understands what we're trying to do in the pass game, uh, in the run game as well. And he's not scared to, to go in and block a, a safety when we need him to. 
So he really understands what we're trying to do. He's the kind of guy that, you know, if you tell him one thing one time, that's he's going to go out and do it. You don't have to tell him multiple times uh, about certain things. And so he's he's everything you could ask for. Do you think you guys have a mature team? Yeah, very mature. You know, we a lot of our, you know, key players are, are young guys, but we've we've played a lot of football. Um, you know, we have the the right veteran guys mixed in throughout the roster that have been around the league. You know, guys like Michael Thomas on special teams, uh, great locker room guy. Uh, you know, some of these guys that, you know, Kevin Hubers of the world that have, have been around here a long time that uh, have seen a lot of things and, and kind, of, kind of help us, guide us through that. But, you know, we've We've been through a, a long playoff stretch now, and uh, we know what it's going to take down the stretch to get to where we want to get to. So we, we have the experience to go and do it. We just got to execute. I guess I, the reason I ask that is because you see changes all over the NFL. Quarterbacks get changed, different wide receivers, you know, whatever changes get made. And it seems like this team, there's like a, a calmness about it, even when you guys lose a couple of games, there's no panic. Yeah, we said that before. Yeah, we you know, we know the kind of team that we are. We show it at practice every day. We practice hard and you know, we work really hard to improve upon the reps that we've we've had that maybe aren't great and we don't go out and make the same mistake twice and then I think you gotta credit the, the culture of, of the team and the locker room and you know what Zach preaches every day. I think that's why you see you know, when Jamar and Joe Mixon goes out, you see guys step up and make plays. When, you know, DJ goes out, Jay Tufele comes in and, and is making plays on defense. And I just think that's a, a credit to the, the coaches and those guys themselves. Along the along similar lines, there's been a lot of conversations in the league the last couple of days about how much accountability a quarterback should take and, and kind of what needs to be done privately, publicly. How have you kind of approached that in the league? Is that something that you've been cognizant of as you, A, got into it and have continued your career? Yeah, I think, you know, for... I think that's one of my strengths as a quarterback. You know, you're kind of relaying a message to to you guys, the media, and to the fans about you know what the locker room thinks week to week, and you're doing it in a diplomatic way. And I think that's something that I've always been good at is you know, understanding the message that I want to get across, and and choosing my words carefully to to do it. You know, you've got uh, football IQ, obviously. Um, your receivers. He, you talked about how smart he is. Short title Boyd, you said the same thing. Jamar, you said the same thing. When you guys come off the field almost on an every every serious basis. Do you get together and say and listen to each other and you know we've got this input, that input, and then go from there? Yeah, you know, it depends on depends on the series. Sometimes there's there's stuff to talk about, and sometimes there isn't. Sometimes what's what's understood doesn't need to be talked about. And you know, we got you know, I was. You know, TB didn't didn't have a lot of targets throughout the game, and then you see him step up in the fourth quarter, making huge catches for us down the stretch, and that's credit to to the culture in that room and, and in the locker room. That you know maybe if things aren't going your way, you're not gonna sit and pout. You're gonna when your opportunity comes, it's gonna it's gonna matter, and you know you got to credit TB for that. And that's that's what I love about those guys. There's no there's no ego. There's no no, oh man, I didn't get a touchdown this game. Oh, I'm not getting targets. They're they're going to go out and do what they're supposed to do, and when their opportunity comes, they're going to make it. It didn't look like they were doubling too much. Did they double Tyler? Or are they trying to take him away? Uh, depend. They they did a couple times uh, over the middle. Uh, they did a good job, kind of disguising it. Joe, what's your experience with revenge or revenging games? You know, payback games, whether it was your guys against the Steelers for the opener, or them for this playoff loss last year in their place. How big of a factor, and do, do you believe in using it as a motivation, and how do you see it from the other side? Uh, no, not really. Every game is its own its own entity, and uh, obviously, you know, you think about it, and but it doesn't really affect your game planning or the way you play or the way you practice or anything. Along the lines of uh, the guys coming on, oh, sorry, up against the... The last question. The last question, okay. Uh, what, same, same line about the... Uh, you know, guys coming off the bench. What does it mean when you actually see P. Ryan, Travion Williams, Christman, Taylor Britt? What does it actually mean that these guys step up and do something? Is it a tangible? Yeah, it's a, I think it's just, you know, where we're at as a, as a team, as an organization. You know, we're building a culture here of winning. And, you know, when, you, when you're 
number is called, you're expected to come in and do the job. And it's also a credit of, to those guys who maybe aren't getting the reps throughout the weeks, and then all of a sudden they're thrown into the fire and, and they've excelled. Uh, and it's credit to them, it's credit to our, our team culture and, and the culture that we're, we're building. And you know, we bring in the right people to, to go out and make those plays. Thanks, Jeff.